Hello everyone. So um, for this stream, um, I was um, thinking of uh, actually having to, I'm probably going to split them up into two because um, there's a little bit of a cleanup uh, that I want to do. And um, this is th thanks to some videos by uh, Music for Life uh, channel on YouTube also with uh, CryEngine videos. And um, you know, it's um, uh, trimming down that player.cpp file so um, you know we can manage uh, the player update a little better um, you know we're gonna work with some attachments today uh, the player input as well so uh, that way you know making that player.cpp file um, you know smaller than uh, than it is you know so uh, let me show you what um, um, I uh, plan on accomplishing uh, accomplishing over the next um, a couple of streams, so this is something I've been working on uh, working on this week. So let's fire this up, and um, we'll uh, we'll see exactly what uh, hopefully we'll have at the end. All right, so let me open this uh, test level here. All right, so a um, couple of the things that I plan on accomplishing is uh, at the moment I've um, moved my camera to be uh, in in first person view just to get a better view of the scene and um, as well as of uh, the action that we're trying trying to do. Uh, so with the test scenario here, uh, once I put press T, um, you get a new uh, action added to our uh, player input, uh, and that is to go into the state of uh, walking or you know uh, idling with a uh, in this case with a torch, and uh, the the biggest. Um, yes, uh, Oscar, uh, thank you for uh, replying. I was seeing the same error. Uh, it was probably due to the fact that I was at, uh, my microphone was not working properly. Um, so if you can let me know uh, if it's working for you, that'd be, that'd be great. Uh, I mean, from OBS, it shows that I'm you know, putting out sound. Uh, I've noticed some people uh, were able to restart that by clicking pause and then play again. Uh, and but yes, I did have those 5,000 uh, 5,000 error, which was a little bit annoying. Apparently, I think, like I said, I think it was due to the microphone. Uh, okay, so um, like I was saying, you know, jumping into game mode, um, you know, you can turn on this, and then you know, you can put it away, um, and. Um, <laughs> yeah, Twitch is uh, twitchy, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so uh, pressing T, you know, brings up um, the, the new state, and uh, you know, you get the. Um, in in my case, what I did was downloaded this model from uh, uh, Cube Brush. I believe it's a free torch, um, and um, the particle effects are just from the game SDK, and uh, they behave pretty nicely. Uh, I did a bit a bit of a tweak to it, uh, but as you can see, you know, the light is on. Um, the cast shadows and we're gonna go about setting that up and um, but that's not uh, the only thing that I did for this um, so if I turn this off and plus F for flashlight we also have a flashlight and it works in the same way as um, that um, that torch but uh, this one's simply attached to your neck bone I believe or the head so um, it's uh, basically following you around, you know, pointing the right way. Uh, we're probably not going to get around to covering this in this video because I want to make it so that uh, wherever you um, wherever you look at, uh, you're going to get to see, um, you know, the the the, the flashlight is going to get oriented that that way. So you can have both of them actually at the same time <laughs> if you'd like. Um, both of these, you know, the the headlamp and the torch. But you know it's kind of it's not the point. Okay, so let's get to it. Uh, like I said, uh, this uh, this first video I'm planning on covering um, um, adding uh, you know creating this uh, this flashlight attachment uh, along with the light itself, and um, you know doing that little cleanup of the player.cpp. So let me just start up um, my. Uh, uh, test solution here so I can follow along and um, 
So let's go into our stream like SAML. And that is here. And uh, let's open up the solution for our stream. Also, um, I'm going to be publishing or publishing. I'm going to be um, committing these changes to the Git repo. Um, I'll post the link in the description once this video is up on YouTube so you can uh, grab the, the source code and, and go through it. Okay, so, um, so like I said, in this video we'll cover um, you know, getting the light in, you know, making sure it works, you know, through a, through a player input uh, action and, um, you know, making sure that it's attached to, um, to the hand bone. Uh, in the next video, uh, we'll go over, um, you know, setting up the state for that, um, you know, walking with a torch animation, um, and, um, you know, kind of refine, refine the light, maybe adding that particle effect and, uh, making it look a little nicer. All right, so uh, first things first, like I said, let's start off with the, um, with the cleanup for this. So uh, one thing that I want to do is um, I want to split some of these up in, in some different files. So let me just uh, make sure that I'm following along here just properly. All right, so let's start off by setting those up. So let's go to CMake lists and um, into our uh, let's see where do we want to add this uh, I believe we can add it to let's put it in here under components because we have you know we have the player in here so we can split those up here so um, we said that we want to split this into components and we're going to call one of them is going to be player input where all our input code is going to go Input. All right, and um, we can also get uh, a player update. And player update, and I think we can also add in here player movement. So components slash player move move. Month. And uh, we need some CPP, so let's add uh, those here. Dot CPP. Dot CPP. And dot CPP. All right. So now we have the files in our CMake list. Let's actually create those. So what I'm going to do is just going to be uh, right-click, add new item. So when you add a new item, always make sure the default is, is not going to default to your, um, you know, where you hope the code is, but to your where solution is. So let's go to uh, browse, and we'll go to code and components. So this is where we want, you know, we can, you know, follow the filter for this. So let's select that folder, and uh, we're going to call this first one. It's going to be uh, what did we say? Player input. And it's a C++ file, so let's add that, and we see it right there. Uh, we're going to add another one, a new item. And this is going to be, I think at this point, we already have the, the path, the proper path. And this one is going to be, uh, let's see, this is, let's go back to CMake lists. I believe it was player update, as I already called it. And it's also a C++ file. And we're going to add one last one, and this is player input. Okay, so add, um, oh, it already exists. Did I add it? Okay, yeah, I added it. So it was player movement, my bad. So add new item, and player movement. movement. All right. The other thing is, since we are here, let's also add our attachments, those being the light components. So uh, we'll start off with just the torch, which is just a regular point light. So let's go ahead and um, I think we should be able to add from here a new item. Let's start off with a new filter, and we'll call this attachments. All right, and in here, let's add a new item. 
and this is going to be our um, make sure again just that you select the proper uh, proper location so code and I believe that I need to I don't think it's I was hoping that it might pick this up but I think I need to rebuild the solution so let's let's do that real quick so let's close out of this and let's see if I can uh, build a solution and have the new stuff in there or generate solution uh, okay that's interesting I haven't seen that before so let's try deleting this and try and build it again Sometimes it might just work to delete your current solution if you run into any issues. And let's fire this thing up. Alright, so we got our game, we got components. So apparently it did not um, let the other filter or the other folder um, happen here so I believe let's take a look at CMake lists it could be due to this as well so in here what I'm gonna add is I'm gonna add another source group for our um, attachments right so let's add uh, sources I'm just gonna copy part of this here and I'm gonna call this uh, attachments underscore uber so uh, attachments and the source group uh, this is going to be attachments and let's see let's make sure that we're closing the parentheses at the end and let's add um, let's add some of uh, the, these two files to start with so first of all we're going to have attachments forward slash and we're going to call this torch C++ and we're going to also have an attachments torch header file okay uh, so now that we have that in place let's um, let's actually try and uh, create those files locally because I'm not entirely sure why I wouldn't create uh, um, the new filter Let's see if we add a new item and we actually create the uh, folder in here. So we have components. Let me just make sure I have the proper setup into the test as well. And right here, let's uh, uh, new folder, and this is going to be attachments. And we'll create our torch.c++. Right, hopefully, when we build the files, that's going to be here. But um, we'll see. All right, so let me close this real quick. I'm kind of curious about this myself because um, I, I haven't done it this way. <laughs> uh, on, my, uh, on my test, I was just creating the... The files inside of the um, um, so let's see we have the um, the file in there so let's try and uh, generate the solution um, for my test I was just creating them manually I wasn't creating them through um, Visual Studio so let's see if we get that new and there it is. So we have attachments. We have the torch.c++. So let's also add our header file just to make sure that we have everything in place. And code attachments. And this is going to be torch.h. Okay. So we have those in place. Let's go about and uh, quickly do the little cleanup of. Um, um, 
of the player that C++ because as you look at it right now it's uh, it's all getting a little long in the teeth you know there's like uh, over you know about a thousand lines and we want to trim some of some of that down um, so um, let's open up player input since that's the first one we'll drag the player to the, to the right pane here so what we need to do is we need to create a couple of functions so those are going to be um, for uh, the, in the player dot, uh, dot h so let's open player dot h as well so in here what we're going to uh, be creating let's see where do we want to place this um, uh, let's see I think we can place it somewhere around here because this was kind of player specific stuff so let's create a, a void and uh, we're going to call this initialize input all right so once that thing pops up let's create our initialize input but we do not want to create it in player.cpp right we're going to create it in player input so uh, let's go to player input here and we're going to just cut and paste this right in here okay we're gonna need a few headers for this just because it's gonna be it's kinda shared between that and uh, um, uh, and the player dot uh, C++ so part of that is gonna be uh, we're gonna need the input component and player dot H so include player dot H and uh, the other thing that we're gonna be, uh, uh, I think this is this is good for now. So uh, let's get this out of the way. So in player.cpp, let's see where do we start with the inputs. This is all that stuff. So we got crow, crow crouch, weapon, mouse. Uh, we have the camera switch. We have our uh, shooting stuff. We have the stone throw from last time. So that's that's about it for now. So let's cut and paste this into initialize input. And you can see that's 100 lines already without any added inputs that we're going to add later on. So in here, what we're going to call is initialize input, right? So let me just follow along with uh, where I have that in my code. So right here, let's initialize. Input. There we go. So we've, you know, trimmed the fat a little bit off of this uh, player.cpp. Uh, so the other one that I wanted to do is uh, the initialize update, because that's a pretty big one. You know, it's kind of taking care of um, all of our um, um, uh, all of our states, right? So if we look at player uh, update, so that's uh, event update, and so there it is. You know, we have all this stuff in here that's doing so much work. You know, we have a few hundred lines of this, uh, and this is something that I've been, um, you know, kind of investigating to hopefully optimize it a little bit. So uh, hopefully it's going to get trimmed down uh, some more. Okay, so we have the player input. Let's do the same for player update. So let's open this up. We'll move it to the left pane here. Okay, so um, in our player update, what we're going to bring in, this one's only going to require our um, uh, include for um, uh, player.h. All right. So let's also make sure that in our player.h file we create our initialized update. So let's see, where do we have our initialized input? So now it's going to be a void to initialize update. All right, so um, we can also create this create definition but one thing that um that I want to have in here is to this what I want to pass I want to pass the um, 
the player state and the frame time because we're going to need that if you look at the player.cpp you'll notice that you know our um, you know we're looking for the state of the player and um, we're also going to be using the frame time uh, somewhere in uh, in one of the uh, one of the states I believe it, I can't remember which one it is but I believe we are using the fr uh, frame time for this so let's um, let's add that in here so one of the parameters is going to be um, um, e player state so this is going to be state and uh, a frame time so that's going to be float frame time alright so from the player.cpp we're going to be able to uh, cut out a bunch of the stuff. So let's start from here, and this is going to go, and it's going, and it's going, and I believe it's all the way down to here. So we can cut that out and paste it right into this. So in here we're going to have a void player component dot dot initialize uh, update and we'll put the parameters in right after this so let's take a look at these two here and we're going to put them right there Okay, so let's see. Hopefully, this is going to catch up, and this is actually C player component. And there we go. I don't see any errors, so that's great. All right. Um, so let's see. What do we want to move for next? Is going to be um, what I have is um, I haven't initialized the attachments, but let's get the player movement because we also brought that in. So player movement is not as long, but it's still you know got a healthy 100 lines. Uh, so let's add that into uh, right after initialize update. So it's going to be a void initialize. Um, let's see what do we call it? Initialize movement, or I think we can call this uh, player movement because we're not really. Mm, well, I guess we can keep on with the same definition. So initialize movement. And to this one, we're going to pass a pass a frame time. So float frame time. Okay. So now that we have that in place, let's go to player where's player movement. There's player movement right there. Okay. So let's move that over here. And in player movement, again, we only need the player header. So player dot h. And then just like before, void c player component namespace initialize. And it was right there. If I can spell initialize movement. And then we have a float frame time. Okay, so we have this in place. Let's um, let's give it some code. So if we look in player.cpp, let's see where do we have our player movement. And I was just uh, following along with um, with my code, and um, it's right here an update movement request. So it's not going to cut a lot of it out, but um, it's still going to be pretty pretty good. Um, so there we go. We get all that code, get that, and place it right here. So in here we're just going to call initial initialize movement and we're going to pass it frame time okay so that actually you know we saved uh, quite several hundred lines of code from uh, from player that uh, you know we're down to 600 I mean over 400 lines of code so that's pretty you know it's going to make it even more manageable and as as you know time moves on okay
So now that we got that out of the way, let's quickly give it a build and see if um, you know everything is still um, still going okay. Hopefully we don't run into any issues and everything is behaving as expected. All right, so that is built. Let's go to our stream project and uh, and see how this is working out for now. And um, once this is done, we'll, we'll get into like the fun stuff. And yeah, sometimes it's, like I said, sometimes it's weird when we start up the engine that it's just uh, choosing not to respawn. So uh, I'm just shutting that down. All right, so let's fire up our example level, jump into game. And apparently the animation are not uh, not playing as I would hope that they will. So let's see what's going on with that. What are we missing? So uh, we have the movement. Uh, is it something that we're not calling? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, update animation. Oh, maybe we need to initialize update in our update here. So initialize update. All right, let's give this another try. Let me make sure that I have it in the in the proper order here. Um, I think that should be good. So let's just fire it up by. Uh, Starting the win local Windows debugger, which apparently is not set to the proper thing, but let's see. Hopefully, um, I guess that was not. I don't think it compiled. So let's stop this real quick, and we'll bi build it again. Uh, oh, initialize update. It's not taking. Okay, my bad. So this one's gonna have to be m underscore. We're pa we were passing it the state. I forgot to pass that in. So M state, and then uh, the other part that we need is P uh, CTX, which is uh, actually right here. PX and frame time. All right, so let's give this another try. Alright, so that's succeeded. Let's fire this thing up. And one thing that um, you're going to encounter is um, usually some, um, whenever you rebuild a solution, um, if you had that feature running with, um, and there we go, so everything is back to uh, where we had it before. Um, so what I was saying is that um, if you um, uh, looked at uh, my, one of my previous videos and you had that feature to um, edit and continue or you know the hot reload kind of thing where you don't need to shut down the engine um, whenever you rebuild a solution that will be erased from here so um, it is um, actually pretty simple I have it saved I believe somewhere on my desktop if I remember correctly yeah there we go right here so the only thing that you would need to add is this little bit of code right there at the top of your uh, of your CMake. So let me make sure that I'm adding it where I'm supposed to. So my apologies for that. All right, so you just need to add this right here at the top. Um, so if you follow along, the CMake minimum required version, and uh, you can just copy and paste this right here. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into um, some of the fun stuff, right? We want to create, uh, we want to give some functionality to the torch and torch.cpp. So let's check to see, make sure we have those added as the torch, but let's also add uh, attachments, and that's going to be torch.h. Okay, um, so we have those in there. So let's take a look uh, at our uh, torch header file. Uh, I'm not going to be, um, this is going to be quite a bit of copying and pasting because um, this component is, um, if you look at uh, 
uh, CryEngine source code, or you know, if you if you look at GitHub, this is the exact, almost the exact code that the point light com uh, component has. Um, a, a couple of the things. Uh, so I'm just going to copy and paste this code, and we'll we'll quickly go over it because. Um, you know, some of it is just uh, render-related related stuff, and, um, you know, I don't want to bore you with it. I mean, most of it I don't understand either. So, um, but as far as the functionality goes, a couple of the things worth noting. I've set up this namespace here to be able to access the, um, um, you know, the GI, you know, the total illumination mode for this slide, as well as the E-minimum spec, because the reason I've set up the namespace is these enums are going to be used in the flashlight uh, component when we get to set that up. And uh, I I'm using the namespace to differentiate between the two. So flashlight is going to have a namespace of flashlight. This one just has torch. Okay. Um, so uh, the class starts off uh, pretty simple. You know, it's just an INTT component, um, you know, um, setting up. Um, the INTT component uh, functions here, and um, again the the render, the constructor, and uh, this is something extra that I've added um, from the point light component code. I wanted to um, to make a to be able to build a component that also has a boolean uh, passed uh, in the constructor that is related to whether it has or it does not have, and let me just make this a little bigger so if you're just pausing the video uh, throughout this, um, you can, um, you know, you can pause your video and, and copy the code. Like I said, this is going to be up on uh, on the repo and on the repository so you can, you can download it from there. Uh, so, uh, as I was saying, I wanted to have a, a constructor for this that um, uh, can also um, you know, create the torch with or without a particle. So uh, that's why I have that in here. Okay, then uh, uh, the other, uh, uh, some of the other options uh, is this uh, struct s options uh, that in uh, the original code, you know, had uh, quite a few um, schematic uh, parameters or accessors, accessors, I would say, but. Uh, since this is not a uh, schematic oriented um, um, component, at, at, at least at this point, um, I'm just gonna, uh, I, I've just, you know, cut that stuff out and um, given it the, some, of, some of its, um, you know, more simple functionality or, you know, non-schematic functionality. Um, so uh, through this struct, you can ac access some of uh, the settings of the light, you know, like the attenuation bulb size, uh, some of the vis area functionality, if it's ambient, uh, also the GI mode. Then we have an X color struct, which is um, pretty similar to this one, but it's, you know, controlling the color, the diffuse, and the specular multiplier. Then you have the shadows, and I've, um, whenever I'm creating this component, I've, I'm setting the shadows to be always be cast. And then the uh, S animation struct, which is just um, um, if you've ever played with lights, you know you can set the style to one through I can't remember. I think I went up as forty, you know, with different uh, style lights. Okay, so uh, and then uh, there's uh, some of the getters and setters, you know, getting the options. Um, um, uh, mostly, mostly getters because um, you use the I you use the structs to set these values. Um, so, um, all the way at the end, uh, the last thing that I've added was this uh, M has particles. So, whenever you create it through that added constructor, you can uh, set that particle to be, you know, false or true. So, you know, you set, you create the um, light with a particle or, or not. And, uh, you know, this could probably be extended to also pass in the path to the particle. Uh, at this point, I just kept it pretty simple. Okay, and then you have the particle effect all the way at the end. So, uh, with that overview, let's um, go ahead and uh, take a look at the Torch uh, C++ file. 
So the same thing, I'm just going to do a copy and paste for that and uh, we'll quickly go through it just, uh, just for the sake of brevity. Okay, so let's copy that and we'll paste it right here. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, as usual, we, we'll, we're going to have an initialize function. And uh, this is a little bit, uh, it's probably not ideal, at least not for me at the moment. But um, I'm using the entity um, uh, entity one slot to create my, uh, my particle. Uh, so, like I said, it's not ideal. I'm gonna I'm gonna be fixed in this, um, you know, a little bit later on. Uh, so that's why I'm saying if you wanna, you know, uh, keep up with the repository, then uh, then you can get uh, some of the latest changes to that. Uh, okay, so uh, we're initializing, and then uh, I've um, in the original code uh, most of the uh, most of the action that the light was, you know, of creating the light was done. In here and initialize. So I've cut that out and I put it in, in load light. So um, we'll jump to that for now. So load light is pretty much doing all the heavy lifting. It was creating the CD light uh, class, and that actually has access to everything that a light has, you know, like the light style, the animation speed. All of these are very self explanatory. Like I was able to uh, to understand them pretty quick. And again, it was also just copying and pasting from that code. So um, I didn't really add anything to it. Uh, so you'll see, you know, there's like all these uh, M option structs, uh, properties, parameters. Um, there's the, the shadow, um, um, the, you know, casting the shadows. Um, let's see what else do we have here. And then uh, we get into the particle emitter. So uh, as you can see, it's looking at to see if uh, M has particle, if it's a true or a, if it's not a true whenever it gets created. And uh, if it is, then we're going to look for this particle effect, at least in my case. So th this is where I was saying that uh, you could potentially pass this as a um, parameter whenever you build the component. All right. And uh, once we go through all of that, we're loading the light into this get or make entity slot. And um, we end up with uh, spawn particle effect. Um, but uh, actually, this was, uh, I ended up not using this uh, just because uh, I was trying, I, I wanted to load um, this particle emitter into my, um, into the, the same entity that is, excuse me, that is loading uh, the light, it, the light itself. So, um, Let's uh, let me uh, let me make this a little bigger so you can uh, and we'll we'll go through it again. So like I said, if you if you're just following along with the code, um, you can pause the video. So let's see what uh, was something that was not able to fit. Okay, so one of the things that uh, I didn't go over is this this render part. So I would say this one is. Um, um, just some of the rendering math and some of the uh, rendering tech that I don't really understand as much, so I can't explain it that well to you. But it's it's really interesting to take a look a look at that. I mean, I I kind of I kind of like it, but then then again, some of it it's just kind of deer in the headlights type situation. Uh, so. Um, there's that. Uh, let's see what else did we have. I think this was able to fit on your screen. Probably this part here was not able to fit on the screen. Uh, we're, uh, we're setting these, um, or we're checking to see if we were casting shadows. And, uh, and yeah, I believe that is it. Uh, and like I said, this part is, uh, I'm still going to keep this around just because maybe, you know, uh, it could prove useful at some point, but at this at this point, we're I'm not using it. Okay, so we have we have the component in place, but that um, you know doesn't really do much by itself, right? We need to um, actually in, initialize that. So um, one thing that I want to do before that is uh, let's actually implement the let's do the player input. So um, let's um, add the functionality to you know, turn on or off this light. So we go to create input, which is pretty convenient now. Huh? And let's see where do we want to place this. Um, 
I think we can place it somewhere around uh, shoot, shoot maybe? Yeah, let's place it right here. So, this is going to be a, I'm going to make a quick comment here. So, um, turn on slash off the torch. Okay, so I'm calling it torch because um, we're going to have, we'll also have a flashlight later on. So, first things first, um, just like before, um, we're going to copy this here and uh, we're going to register this action. This is going to be a torch. I'm going to call this torch on. Um, and in here we're going to have the functionality of it. And at the end we're going to need to bind the action. So again, what I'm going to do is just copy this part from here and place it right beneath. And this one's going to be, uh, this is going to be the torch turn, turn, on or off action to, and I think we're going to call this to T, because it's going to be the key T for torch. So there we have it right there. Let's make sure that we've been buying the correct one. There it is. Okay. Um, so um, one thing that we need to uh, we need to account for is uh, you know how do we uh, know if um, the um, and one thing that I forgot I think this needs to be a parentheses closed and semicolon. Um, so how do we turn on or off the light, right? Well, that's pretty simple. So if, um, and one thing that I forgot to, uh, to add in here, and let's actually do it right now because um, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So in the player.h, let's create a quick uh, pointer to our um, torch component. So that's going to be a... Um, C torch component, and I believe we need to uh, import the header first. So let's do that right here. So hashtag include, and this is going to be uh, attachments. I think I need to do dot dot attachments and torch dot h. All right, so now that we have the header in here. Let's do a quick pointer to this. So torch component. And let's see what I call this. I called it a P torch. Alright, so that way, once we get to actually check for things within the P torch, we can do if P torch. And I was thinking that you could access it straight from there. Oh, but I believe sometimes with these separate files, it's um, IntelliSense does not pick them up as easy. So, uh, so if that is enabled, which is pretty, pretty simple, right? So what do we want to do? We want to enable, right? So p torch. enable and we need to pass it a flag of true so if, if it's not enabled we enable it else if it's already enable it if it's already enabled let's do p torch enable false all right and then we're, we're disabling it um, I'm gonna put in a quick uh, cry log in here just to make sure that this is working properly. So, cry log, and this is uh, turn on torch, and then turn off torch. All right, there we have it. Um, so now that we have this, um, this is where we're going to also, uh, in the next session, um, we're going to add um, our, um, you know, we're going to control the fact, um, 
we're going to try and uh, you know also control the the animations. So we're going to have that uh, you know carrying torch state or a flag of you know is carrying torch. So that's going to that's going to uh, probably go in here, right? Because when we when we enable it, we want to go into that carrying torch state and you know call the the right animation. And when we disable it, we want to go back to you know something previous, you know maybe to standing or something. Okay, um, so um, we have the functionality for our action. Now let's take a look and see if um, uh, if that works. So let's go ahead and build this. Alright, I'm not entirely sure why I needed to reload the solution, but... Alright, there we go. That looks good. So let's go to stream and let's see whenever we play T if we can trigger this uh, turn on or off. Oh, that did not like it that very much. And let's see, why did that not, uh, why was that upset about things? Oh, I think I know why, because Torch is not really, um, it's, I think it's, at this point, it's probably null, you know, it's not pointing to anything. So, let's, um, let's get that going first, you know, have it uh, actually create the component. So, in order to do that, Let's um, let's do this real quick. Um, what I think we can do is um, let's take a look and see where do we have our attachments. Um, what I what I've done for for my project was create a separate function just to initialize attachments, and that is um, you know getting um, pretty much everything set up. You know, so for example, um, this this P torch actually um, have it be a component so um, let's do that I think that might be that might be good so uh, at least we can take that out of the equation you know not having um, anything that this is pointing to uh, alright so let's see we have an initialize attachments and we can create that somewhere around here where we're doing all these initialized work so void initialize uh, attachments and this is just going to be empty and you can uh, for now I'm just going to keep this uh, in the the player um, the player CPP file but um, uh, maybe later we can do the same thing we did for the input movement and update uh, right now this is going to be pretty short we're just initializing this torch attachment so let's create it and in here I'm gonna save this because some of the code is actually um, we're gonna use you know copy some of this stuff from here so let's take a look and see we have this um, we already have this pretty nicely useful code here so we can copy this and paste it right here And let's see, we get, get a little bit more space. As well as this. So our um, attachment, this is probably going to call this something more meaningful. So this is going to be P torch attachment. And let's name this torch. Right. So now that we're getting the this attachment, and uh, you know we can you know get some info about it. And I think this is pretty much it for. We don't need to keep this open anymore. So in uh, our uh, let's see where was it player .cpp. Let's go ahead and go down to 
initialize. Uh, let's see, how come this one's not updated yet? Very interesting. Uh, so let's take a look and see where did our initialize attachment got placed at. Uh, da, da, da. Huh, where did it get placed? I thought it was... Oh, huh, it got placed in player movement for whatever reason. So let's cut this out of here, because I don't really want it in player movement. So let's move it to player, and uh, let's see, we'll place it somewhere right around here, I think, that's right after the events. I think that should be a good placement for now. All right, so um, we're getting the interface, uh, we're getting the, the torch attachment. So let's do a quick check and make sure that this is when, well, this is not null, so p torch attachment is not equal to a null pointer. Then we're going to try and do some things with it. So um, first thing that we want to do is um, uh, just like uh, you've probably seen it over here, it's going to follow this quite closely. So we're going to get a s entity spawn params and paste it right here. And at this point, we're not going to care that much about the positioning because we're going to position it right where the attachment is on the player. So the one thing that we need to do is we're going to need to do this part here because, you know, when we spawn it. So, but we're not going to use just, a, you know, okay, take this entity and you use it. What we're going to do is we're going to try and uh, um, do something a little bit more to it. So what, what I have here is an I entity pointer. And I'm going to call this a P torch entity. So if I need to do some things, you know, later in the code, uh, I'm, I have access to it. This IP entity is pretty localized to this. so you can't really do too much else with it. Okay, so in here, what I'm going to have is, this is going to be P torch entity. And uh, now this is where the fun part comes in. Um, so um, what we need to do is uh, create the component, right? So let's do that. So we already have that P torch right there. And what this is going to be is going to be a our torch entity is going to do a create component class. And what that class is is our C torch component. And for now, we're just going to give it. Um, um, we're going to give it a false because I'm not sure if I have that uh, that um, uh, specific particle effect in my um, in my project. Uh, so uh, we have the torch right there; it's created, uh, but we want to attach it, right? We want to place it where our actual uh, character attachment is. So, in order to do that, I'm going to do is um, you don't need entity ID and this is going to be uh, let's call this torch ID and this is going to be uh, the ID of my torch entity arrow get ID so once we get the ID we're going to need a C entity the anti come on attachment and this is also going to be a pointer to p torch entity attachment all right and let's call this a new c entity attachment all right so once we get these what we can do is p 
torch entity attachment. First of all, we're going to set its ID, entity ID, to our torch ID. So we're using the actual torch entity ID. And this is torch ID. And now it's time to bind that to the actual character, character attachment. So P torch attachment is going to be an add binding. And to who is this going to be attached to? To this. All right, so now that we have those attached, I believe we can try and see if um, um, if we get a, a light turned on or off. So let's go ahead and build this. And also, uh, one thing that we uh, need to remember is that we do not have, we need to add that in the character pool. We need to add that attachment. So, you know, we, we need to place it on a specific bone, you know, wherever we want it. So let's open the level here and we'll jump into the character tool and I believe, I think our stuff was pants guy. Okay, so we see we already have a couple of attachments here. Let's add another one and we're going to call this torch because that's what we named it. And let's look at the joints. Where do we want to attach it to? So I think we're going to attach it to it, his, his left hand right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. And let's jump into game mode and see if we can... Uh, and uh, not. Apparently it didn't like that very much. Jump quickly jump into debug and see if we can uh, figure what's going on here. So let's go to properties, debugging. And instead of the, um, the game launcher, uh, I don't want to edit, but I want browse. So let's go and look for sandbox. There it is. Apply. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Right off the bat, let's see if we, there's something that might be, you know, kind of jumping at us as far as um, any issues going on here. So we have the player input, uh, and we have the attachment being created. So, what could we be missing? All right, let's try and uh, try and run the debugger and see if uh, I don't know why it's just keep going into that. Oh, so um, it's trying to to check to see uh, if it's enabled, right? So let's see. I believe I did not add a value for this just yet, or did I? No, I did. Bool am active equals false. So that's should be okay. And we're spawning the particle. Let's see. Um, hmm. What is there missing? Let's see, we have the two constructors here, and that is also, oh, is there? Huh, for whatever reason, I am not seeing, I thought I had, oh, there, nope. I thought I had that in here um, for this constructor. I believe I've, I've missed this constructor when I copied it. That is kind of weird. Let's quickly, at least for now, 
um, try and not care about the um, um, the true or false. So let's see if we remove this here. So we're not um, really looking to see if um, there is a need for the particle effect. Let's take a uh, try try this again. So let's build. Let's fire this thing up. I should have started it in debug mode. Yeah, uh, Oscar is right. Uh, I could add some breakpoints uh, here and there. But let's see if... Um, let's try it with the uh, debugger again. Huh, so it still keeps going into this is enabled. So initialize input if ptorch is enabled. Oh, well, <laughs> my bad. Um, I um, I forgot one um, essential piece, right? So we are um, doing this little um, implementing the initialized attachments, but we're never really calling this anywhere, right? So I believe we should be calling this an initialize where, wherever we initialize the player. So let's see, initialize input, and let's initialize attachments as well. How about that? Let's try that out for a change. So let's see how that goes. Uh, hopefully that uh, that takes care of that little little issue, and uh, I'm, I'm also going to keep it into into the editor because I'm I'm hopeful that it hopefully it will, it will work. <laughs> so let's take a look and see what we get. And there it goes. It's uh, it's kind of flickering for whatever reason. But first of all, let's um, let's make it a little darker in here. And tools, environment editor, and let's see if we can uh, make it kind of dark. And uh, let's see if we can also. Um, I believe what I'm gonna do. Let's see if we can get the. Uh, I believe I have uh, global illumination turned off, so let's turn that back on. And uh, there we go. That looks a little bit more darkish, kind of kind of thing. And just to kind of make it look like it's at night. All right, so. Um, pressing T, turning off, turning on. Uh, one thing that I've noticed is that um, it's not really doing it uh, properly. So, um, let's see. And as you can see, it's. Um, <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Oscar. It would have been a, a little bit hard to to diagnose with uh, with the lack of uh, you know my programming skills. I guess I wasn't paying attention that I was missing the actual initialize. Um, so now this light is casting shadows, and you know it's uh, since it's attached to the player, it's uh, you know following it along. So if you can see, it's attached to his left hand, so he's just swinging it back and forth. Um, so one thing that um, it's not uh, properly working at the, at the moment is, you know, this turning on or off. I'm not sure why that is just uh, causing this thing to, to flicker and, um, and not do um, the, you know, not turning it on properly. 
So I'm trying to figure out why that might be the case. Uh, let's see. So we have the player that C plus plus. Let's take a look at initialize attachments real quick. So the spawn and two params. That is happening there. Oh, I know why that is. Because um, if you look at this, I did not add any kind of activation mode. So um, what that happens is that I think that whenever it, re reach a, it, it gets an input from the keyboard, it's just trying to do something, you know, either going through enable, disable, enable, disable. So in here, let's add an if, just like we had before, and activation mode is pressed. So once we press that key, we're going to go into these if statements and I believe I copied one too many of these so there's that and that alright so let's do a quick build and um, we'll jump into into the editor and uh, take another look at it and I should have saved that level because it was looking pretty nice at, at night um, and, uh, and such All right, so let's take a look at our example. Oh, I did save it. Good. Okay. So now if you press T, it's behaving as a properly. Press T again. The light is off. Press T again. There it is, you know, casting its shadow. And around the corner again. And, you know, when you turn it off, you turn it off. It's just like you turn off things, right? Okay. Um, so that is pretty cool. But let's go in and see if we can... Um, one uh, last thing that I want to do today um, is um, let's go in and see if we can uh, make this light be a little bit more interesting because right now it's just a default uh, on or off light. So what I'm going to do is right here when we initialize the attachments, we can, you know, since we have the P-Torch, we can get uh, access to some of its properties. So uh, P-Torch... Uh, what do we want to do? Let's start off, uh, let's try and change the color. M color, uh, actually, sorry, that should be an arrow. So M underscore color. And um, this is going to be a dot M color. The one that I've uh, played around with um, is this. So I'm just going to copy and paste the value of the color. It's kind of a yellowish color tint. So there it is. We set the color to it. Let's um, also set the diffuse multiplier so it's not as bright. So P torch arrow. And this is going to be also under color. M uh, color dot diffuse multiplier. So let's set this to maybe a 0.2F. So, you know, kind of a little dimmer. Let's um, also give it a style, right? Because we've talked about that. That's kind of making things a little bit more interesting. So torch. And uh, this is under M animation style. And then we have a style. And uh, this is uh, one thing that I kind of liked was 34. That's what I used for that little torch project because it's kind of like, uh, you know, the, the fire a little bit representing. And uh, also P torch. Uh, this was a little bit, um, uh, its default animation speed is at 1, and I felt it was a little bit too, uh, you know, too jarring, too, too fast. So, M speed, and I've placed it at uh, point 0.2, you know, so about 5 times slower. And uh, let's also turn down the radius, maybe, to be... M radius, radius, there we go, to be maybe 6.0 F. Okay, so now that we have that, let's quickly build. And it's good that we managed to keep this one session under an hour, which is pretty, pretty good. Uh, hopefully within the next session, about the same time, we'll be able to get the uh, other stuff done. Kind of just the, the niceties. This was just, you know, getting the groundwork in place. Um, so for next session, we'll do, um, you know, getting the actual animations and, you know, getting that little model that is, you know, in his hand. All right. So jumping into game mode, 
there we go. We have a kind of a dim yellowish light. Um, you know, that is casting shadows because that's how we've set it up right from the get-go. Um, so let's see if we go in here a little bit. You know, just to kind of highlight the shadows a little bit when it goes around some of these boxes. There you go. It's got some nice shadows to it. And, you know, turning it off or on. That works working just fine. Um, so, yeah, there, uh, there we have it. Um, it's, um, you know, a player walking around, you know, with a flashlight. So, um, that's going to be uh, it for uh, this stream. And I uh, plan on uh, doing part two of this, um, hopefully uh, next weekend. So, um, thank you so much, guys, for everyone that stopped by to have a look at this. Hopefully you got something out of it. Like I said, I'll, uh, um, you know, uh, push the changes to the repository. Um, as soon as uh, probably later on today once I get the video uploaded thank you Oscar again for stopping by yeah see you soon uh, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll be able to stop by some of your streams next week alright take care everyone